Okay. All right. Well, welcome, Rotarians. Uh, my name is Alana Levins Craig. And I'm Mike Whitehurst. And the two of us today will be leading you through the district grants training for the 2020 21 Rotary year. Unfortunately, due to the COVID 19 pandemic, we were unable to meet in person. And so we put together this training video for you to be able to learn about the district grants process. And then that way your club will be eligible for uh, receiving a district grant this year. So one of the things that's great about district grants is that they, they're a smaller, more local type project. And the decision making, the money, everything comes from our local Rotary district. And all of the applications and the reporting are done online on matchinggrants.org and uh, it's a pretty simple process that we're going to walk you through today. So here are some examples of district grants. These are just a few. Uh, we tend to receive anywhere between 50 and 100 district grants every year. So you can always go look on matchinggrants.org to get some ideas for district grants if your club is interested in doing one. So when it comes to the funding, you'll hear a term called DDF, and that term is district designated funds. So these are the funds that are used to pay for these grants. In the next Rotary year, each club is eligible for up to $3,500, which must be matched by the club donations. So you can apply for some of that or all of that. You can apply for one grant or more than one grant but it will total that $3,500. And you're welcome to work together on projects with other clubs. The important part is that applications need to be submitted by August 1st. So it's a great to start thinking about some project ideas now. There's a few nuts and bolts we have to go over just to make sure that your club is eligible to uh, be approved for the grant. So most importantly, you need to be up to date on all of your district and your Rotary International dues. So it's a great idea to check with your president or your treasurer to make sure that your club has uh, paid their dues for the first half of the Rotary year. Also, this is a new requirement this year. All clubs have to have their Rotary Foundation goals entered on myrotary.org. If you need any help with that, you can go to the Rotary 5340 webpage and on the foundation page, you will see a quick and easy PowerPoint that will walk you through those steps. And if you have any further questions, you're always welcome to contact me. Another important part is that you'll wanna make sure that any grants that you have from the prior Rotary year have all been properly reported and closed. And at least one person from your club must participate in this training and then take the quiz afterwards and receive a passing score. So now, oh, and a very important point, sorry, I almost passed through that, is that all of your paperwork and your final reporting is due by April 1st. Here you'll see the timeline for district grants. So August 1st, as we discussed earlier, is when the applications are due online. And during the month of August, will review the district grants. So the committee looks at them and they also have to have approval through the Rotary Foundation. So as soon as all that's done, your club will get notified that your grant has been approved and the funds will be released to your club. In approximately November through March, you'll be working on those projects. And then as I mentioned on the last slide, April 1st is when your final reports are due online. I'm going to walk you through matchinggrants.org. This is the online record keeping system used by District 5340. When you enter matchinggrants.org into your web browser, click on the district grants box on the right hand side. And the landing page it'll take you to talks about help and other things. Here is the landing page. You can see the help tab at the top banner. Um, how does it work is a brief description of the website and um, how other Rotarians can pledge to projects and more of an overview. Frequently asked questions will provide you with quick information for 
the most commonly uh, asked questions that come up. Quick Tips is a very helpful section that gives detailed information about some of the more common um, uh, things uh, on the website, how to add users, um, how to upload documents, photos, that sort of thing. Those are all discussed in Quick Tips. And then finally, the signature process. That walks you through the description of who needs to sign and how that whole process proceeds. So how does it work? This is uh, just kind of an overview of that page. Frequently asked questions, here are some of those that were mentioned earlier. Quick tips, as you scroll down, there's 11 of those here, uh, finishing with 11 and going on down to one. So let's uh, talk about submitting a new project. When you click Submit Project, on the banner just to the right of main list at the top of the page, it'll bring you to um, this page here. You will enter your project title, select the correct rotary year, 2021 is where we are now. If your um, project is taking place here in the US, it would be a USA uh, country project and you can enter the location, perhaps San Diego. Some district grants take place uh, in foreign countries and we'd like you to enter that information and be specific about the location if you can. The area of focus is more intended for global grants and um, projects that fall outside of district grants. But please do uh, go to the activity type and pick from the drop down menu the type of activity that this district grant is. In the project summary box, you'll uh, want to provide a brief description of the project. There's information here about what's expected. Um, keep this very precise, uh, concise rather, and precise. And then finally in the uh, description, uh, project description box, there's information here about what's requested. These are gonna be um, uh, the primary things that end up in the final report. So you can elaborate here on uh, your project description. So project summary, Elena, you wanna recap for us? When, yeah, so in your project summary, um, we need to get certain information. And what that information is, is we need to know what the activity is that's being funded and who's gonna benefit from that. We also need a couple other details such as the name of the location or where, where it's happening and what city or country. But just know that in that project summary, it's just a simple sentence. As you can see in the example, five computers provided for computer lab students in Ecuador. It's telling us the activity being funded, where it will be. And so that's the only information needed there. In the project description, that's where you'll put a few more of those details. How will your project meet the needs that you've identified? What's the timeline for your project? What will the funds that you're getting be used for? and also how your club members will be involved. Then at the bottom of, uh, below the project description, you'll wanna enter the information for the contact person and the project budget. So you'll wanna make sure that the district number 5340 is entered. Please enter your Rotary Club name, your contact name, and your email address if you're the project sponsor. Under the project, budget, you'll put the total size of the budget, which perhaps may be $7,000. And the club contribution towards that might be $3,500. And then the district contribution or the DDF amount might also be $3,500. Uh, please ignore the payment information. We don't use that in our district. Our funds are distributed by um, automatic bank transfer. And then pay special note to check this box at the bottom. Once this page is completed, you'll check this box to state that uh, the project conforms to the Rotary mission statement. Click save and then away you go to the next. So a couple things that just wanna reiterate, uh, the project contact person is someone that needs to be able to see that project through to its conclusion. And also somebody who is checking their email regularly. 
what we really want to see is a is a person's email in there. Sometimes when a generic email is used, like president at or treasurer at, uh, those aren't checked on a regular basis. So if you could put an email in there that's looked at a regular basis, that would be wonderful. And then uh, just as Mike mentioned, your product project total budget will be your club contribution and your DDF um, added together. That should include your project total budget. Uh, the payment information, Elena, I can take this one. Sure. Um, as I mentioned, we are no longer um, uh, sending out checks and all payments are made by ACH transfer. And so we'll be looking for you to upload a document that provides the bank name, the bank routing number, your club account name and account type, checking or savings and account number. And this can go to a club account or a club foundation account, but it cannot go to a project sponsor or beneficiary. The funds must go through the club. And here's a sample of the form that you can fill out when uploading your bank deposit information. A copy of this blank form will be available on the district website and you can upload it as a restricted or protected document to uh, the website on the documents page. And as I stated before, um, the mission statement is at the bottom. You'll wanna check that box uh, when you're completed. Elena, you wanna take this one? So the signature process is an important process when it comes to district grants. And it's a necessary step in order to get approval and also for the submission of the final report. So please make sure that uh, you have, as we mentioned before, the correct club name, the correct email for the contact person. Um, that's really, really important. And you'll see a drop down menu. When you do that, uh, sometimes there's a tendency to accidentally check one of the district foundation committee members on there, but it should really be the contact person from your club instead. And this last point here is go back and review the signature process that was described earlier as part of the help menu on the website if you have any questions about this. Um, adding and removing people, as I mentioned, as signatories, that can be done uh, by reviewing the quick tips. So here's that signature process area where you can go to find more information. And as I mentioned, quick tips next to that. Uh, talks about how to add and remove uh, people to the project. So this is when it gets exciting, right? Your grant is complete and ready to submit. So once your application's been completed, you've turned that in, you've gotten your signatures, you've submitted your grant, that's when the foundation committee, that's when our work starts. So we'll get a notification that your grant's been submitted and then what we will do is when we have our first meeting in August, we will look at the grants that have been submitted and then let you know once your grant has been approved. And so you'll get notification by email saying, congratulations, your grant's been approved. And just know that that process can take between four and five weeks. So if you don't get a response right away, no worries at all. Just know that that, that has a, um, a bit of a lag time on that approval process. So you will you will be notified you got, um, that your grant was approved and then your DDF money will be automatically deposited into your account based on the deposit form that you uploaded. It's a suggestion to not spend any of the expected funds before they arrive, just in case there's some issue with approval. We'd hate to have you spend the money up front and then have the grant not approved. So. Best to wait until you get that approval email. Okay, so now you've gotten your funds, what's next? So this is the part where you'll be doing your project, but there's a couple things that are really important. So that first bullet point mentions to document and save proof of all of your expenses. Before you can submit your final report, you will need to upload these documents. So it's really important along the way that you keep copies of all of your receipts from the stores, any canceled checks. If you get an invoice from a vendor that says that you've paid it, hang on to all of those. That's really, really important. Um, if you're making a donation to another organization, just take a picture of the check before you send it off 
and you can upload that as well. So you're gonna make all of those images into a PDF and then those will get uploaded into the document section of your district grant. So you'll go and you'll click the administration box, which is what will allow you to then upload to that section. And the best thing is upload those receipts along the way because um, sometimes you get four months, five months down the road and then you don't know where those receipts are. So those are something you can always enter along the way, but they're a necessary process. So here's what the page looks like on matchinggrants.org. Um, your description of the project that we talked about earlier is over on the left-hand side across this top menu. Click on finance and it gives you or financing that gives you the breakdown of um, the club funds and the district DDF funds. And then here, the documents tab. You'll want to make sure that you've clicked on administration in the upper right-hand corner. Um, look you'll want to name the document that you're going to be uploading. It may be receipts number one or receipts for certain expenditure. Um, click on browse your computer to find that document. It must be in a PDF form. If it happens to be sensitive information, uh, maybe it's a canceled check, perhaps it's your bank deposit information, click restricted access. Otherwise, if it doesn't matter for if anyone can view it, you can leave that unchecked and then up, click upload to upload those uh, documents. All right, so your district grant can be in any one of these nine statuses. So if you're wondering where your grant is in the process, you can always go onto matchinggrants.org and it will give you the status on the far right-hand side. So if you have proposed your, your grant, you're still in that looking for funding process, now you've been fully pledged, you submit it, get it signed, you'll get that approval email. And then once we put the funds in your account, you'll know that it's paid and your last two steps will be to report it and then we can mark it officially complete. Oh, the history logs. Um, <laughs> so there's um, permanent history logs that can be entered that will state the status of the project, if there's been changes uh, that have occurred along the way. Uh, those types of things need to be entered in the red history log box. If there's communication just between the project sponsor and perhaps the committee, um, those communications that are not memorialized can be entered in the grew, uh, excuse me, the green box. So here's what that page looks like. Um, in the red box, you'll uh, type in anything you want memorialized. And then you see in green all of the um, people that are communicated with on this particular project and information just to communicate can be entered in the green box. And then click save history log and it'll send it, the email to all of those recipients with the red box um, information memorialized. Another thing you can do to let the grant committee know more about your project is to add photos of your grant. So you can upload those photos on the photo section of the district grants page. And Mike will show you on the next slide uh, what that picture, I mean, what that section looks like. Um, so it's just to the, next to the documents tab, you can click on photos, similar sort of process. You'll choose the file. Um, it'll look on your computer and um, you can identify the file that you want to upload, provide a caption for that particular photo, and click the upload button. So your district grant is finished. What's next? You are going to uh, balance your expenses with, with what you have. Okay, I don't want to read the slide to you, so I'm going to tell you instead. <laughs> <laughs> um, so make sure that you've expended the amount of money that you said you were going to expend in your grant. And if there's any funds left over, you need to return the DDF portion to District 5340. So let me give you an example. Let's say that your project was $2,000, $1,000 from your club and 1,000 DDF. When you finished your project, you realized that you only spent $1,800. So there's $200 left over, 100 of that from your club, 100 of that of DDF money. So if you could at that point, 
please mail a check for the $100, the DDF portion, uh, to Rot Rotary District 5340, and then uh, we'll be able to complete your grant. And make a note in the history log of things like this. So when we go back and look at these, uh, the history log for the project at some future point in time, it's helpful in, in uh, remembering what has happened in the past. So I spoke about this earlier, but I can't emphasize it enough. It seems to be the one part that really keeps people from being able to have their project complete. And that is being sure that all the documentation of the spending is uploaded into the document section. So what we spoke about before, uh, the receipts, the canceled checks, the paid invoices, please, please, please make sure that you upload those into the document section. So when you go to submit the final report, which is due by April 1st of 2021, make sure you fill that out. And I wanna to bring to your attention now, just so you're thinking about it, you'll see in section seven and section eight, that's where you list your income and your expenses. So if you got $1,000 from your club and $1,000 from DDF, you would list that in section seven. And if you wrote a $2,000 check, for RILA or to Project Mercy, you would put that in Section 8. But I won't be able to officially complete your grant until that documentation is in there. So I can't seem to emphasize that enough, but make sure you get those uploaded. And so this is what um, that page looks like. Go back to the description. Here you can see that uh, both signatories have signed, they're in green, and um, to the right hand side, it says final report. Click that button and it brings up the final report page. You fill that out, submit it, and you're done. All right, so it will be, I can't wait to look and see what district grants we have uh, coming through in the next Rotary year. It's always wonderful to see how much good is being done by Rotarians throughout not just San Diego and Imperial County, but all of the places where district grants happen. So you can see my name, my email address, and my cell phone number there, and I am available to you anytime. So if you have a question right now while you're thinking about your grant, or you need help entering your Rotary Foundation goals, or you have any questions along the way, I am always here for you. Mike? And I would add one other thing. Um, as mentioned, the um, the bank deposit form will be listed on the website near the location of the link for this training. Also listed near the link to this training is a link to the quiz that follows. Uh, Elena, you wanna talk about the quiz? <laughs> Good point. <laughs> so um, you will see that there is a quiz um, that is necessary for you to take once you've completed this training. And that, quiz has, how many questions does it have, Mike? It's in two parts. There's a part on policies and procedures and a part on the website, roughly eight or nine questions about each topic. Okay, and so I believe it's about a, you need to correctly answer around 75% to pass. Is that, is that correct? Um, that sounds about right. The, okay. <laughs> the website so, will tell you if you have a passing score, so. Uh, Anyway, and then what will happen, uh, you can what will happen is multiple uh, times. Once, you, once you've passed that test, the information will go directly to the district grants committee. And so we will know that your club has taken the test, passed it, and is eligible to apply for a district grant. Okay, I think we're done. Thank you, Alana. All right. Thank you, Mike. Good luck, guys. <laughs>